All right, so it's 9.15 and we're talking about data. <laughs> so yeah, uh, thank you for turning up because it's pretty early to talk about data. But this is my favorite topic. Uh, and uh, as you can see, my Twitter handle is analytics queen. So that's my passion. Um, Today, we are going to talk about analytics for independent game developers. So I want to walk through step by step what sometime, uh, what I go through uh, to help you to the stage where you can actually turn that data into some actions for yourself. Uh, so in other words, I'm going to give you the no bullshit guide. Maybe a little bit acronyms, but most of the time, I will just be talking about very practical step by step. So a little bit about me, yes, uh, I'm the founder of uh, Second Sight. Uh, we are building a platform to be your virtual monetization analyst. So we will take your data, analyze it, spit out recommendation for you to improve your game design and your monetization. Uh, my previous experience has involved uh, supercomputing at Microsoft, uh, adapting Western games into Asia to, uh, for PopCap, which is, has been a very difficult job, uh, but a lot of fun. Uh, also co-founded an uh, independent game publisher called Surprise Attack in Australia. Uh, I'm based in Melbourne. So just before I begin, like just um, show of hands, how many of you currently are using an analytic tool or using your own tool analyze data right now? Great. Wow, that's actually more than 50%. That's great. Cool. So I just want to go ahead and debunking a few myths, okay? Uh, and I found this is one of the things, I don't really want to talk about the importance of data, which I did talk about last year. So I don't want to repeat that because I'm assuming you're here, you understand data nowadays is one of the most important competitive advantage you can have for your game. So I don't want to talk about the importance of it, but I do want to talk about a few myths people have, which stop them from using data. So the first myth is I heard a lot, it takes too much effort to set data up. So with modern analytic tool, you know, without having to build your own tool, with modern analytic tool, I've consulted for over 60 games or so, I've never ever seen developer taking more than one day to set up integration with one of the analytic tools. And I will talk about which tool you should be using. And the second, you need a data scientist to read the data. To some degree, it is true, okay? If you really want advanced analytics, you want machine learning, you do need a data scientist. Uh, that's why top studios usually have a huge data science team. Uh, the, uh, uh, one of, I work with one of the chief data scientists uh, for the biggest company in Europe. And yeah, they have an army of data scientists. And I'm not talking about that. For independent game developers and lots of explorative analysis, you don't need having a data science degree. I'll walk you through step-by-step -step guide to how to do this. And that covers the most common scenarios, by the way. Um, the third myth, using data will make your game a data-driven game. I heard that a lot and a lot of people have been burned by that. Uh, so data can only tell you what's happening and to a certain degree, if you track detail enough, why it is happening, but it doesn't tell you how to fix it. Okay, you can use A-B testing to test your fix and see if it makes a difference, but you still need to use your design skill uh, and your understanding of your audience to make a better game. And sometimes the incremental improvement by just looking at data doesn't work. There are a couple of times I had to tell my clients, uh, you have to make big change now. Don't worry about A-B testing smaller incremental changes. It shows now you have to make big change. Um, and that's not something data can do for you. It's a system, it's not a driving force. So nowadays we call it data informed. The data community start talking about it as data informed rather than data driven. That's the right term. So these are three myths I want to talk about before I start. Okay, so 
First step, true Santa Lita tool. I got that question a lot. Um, so I want to say in the last few years, there has been huge number of analytics tool coming out. Like from, I've used Flurry, Google, uh, Google Analytics, Mixpanel, Unity Analytics, uh, Facebook Analytics, and Lookalytics. I've used them all. And I have to say, at recent time, Facebook Analytics is the best. Okay, there are several reasons uh, of this, and they have been building a lot of features recently as well. So at this point in time, this will change. This will probably change next year because last year I wouldn't recommend Facebook Analytics, but this year I highly recommend Facebook Analytics. It's not just they don't just track Facebook logging; they actually track every single player via the SDK. It's a normal SDK like any other analytic tool. You integrate it, you send events, it shows up in Facebook Analytics. One of the best thing is it's fast and the segmentation is real time. Unlike Unity Analytics, which can only start gathering data once you establish segment, this segmentation for Facebook Analytics is real time. Uh, as well as uh, lots of criteria in building your segments. I almost do not have to have my own backend, and I can use Facebook Analytics nowadays to do a lot of stuff uh, that expensive analytic tool used to do. Like, for example, also uh, breakdown and pivoting on certain parameters looking parameter and looking at different cohort based on that parameter. Facebook analytics are doing all of that. So please have a look at it. It's completely free as well. Uh, and I think Facebook analysts as a big data company is doing very, very well. Okay, next. So that's the first step. Once you choose an analytic tool, right, then you have to think about what you want to add. Uh, integrate with the tool what you want to add as events, all right? So uh, everybody know, everybody here knows the definition of events, right? So I don't have to cover events, right? Okay, cool. So event is basically an action that user performs in game. That's significant to you, you need to track. There are three basic categories you should definitely track. Don't track too much data, because the more data you have, you, you're going to be in a data paralysis. You're going like, what do I do now? Um, so track the most basic three categories. And the other three categories, you have to understand your early user experience. That means you have to track some part of, uh, if your tutorial is linear, I would highly recommend initial tutorial to be linear. Uh, you should track each and every individual tutorial steps as detailed as possible. Um, the second category is your metagame. You have to track every sing single uh, progression point. Okay, so if your, uh, your game is a level-based game, you should track level. So level start, level end. And I will explain why that is in a minute, because when I start going into analysis of it. Uh, and you need to track if you're round-based endless game, for example, you should track round, because uh, they are your metagame. They are how, how your, your game progress. Uh, and if it's RPG, for example, you should track character improvement, character level up, and things like that. So start tracking all the major points that indicating your player is progressing your game. And third category is monetization. Uh, so monetization uh, typically is split into, you know, item purchase, which is not what I mean is not in-app purchases because they're not real money, they're soft currency. Uh, for example, you have a currency and coins in your game, so you should track that separately from in-app purchases, which is actual real money. Um, so item purchases and in-app purchases. But the in-app purchases, make sure you separate the first purchase from following purchases. The reason is first purchase is a significant event, right? because players are much more likely to purchase more once they make the first purchase. So it's a, it's a hump to get them over, what we call an inflection point analysis. So where is the point where the, develop, uh, where the player actually made the first purchase? You got to get as much information around as possible so you can make sure the first purchase uh, happen in the right way. Uh, so track that separately. You can do that either via parameter to say indicate 
purchase number equals one. I often see that uh, with developer and that's fine. Or you can track it as separate event. Facebook analyst doesn't limit the number of events you track where Unity does. So uh, you can send as many events as possible. So you can certainly track it as a separate event if you want to. It doesn't really matter, by the way, uh, with Facebook analytics because uh, the pivoting is really good. So once you have events, typically you add parameters to indicate what happens around that event. That's what parameters do, right? So in, in your integration, you that point happens, say round end happen, you send a customer event, and then you send a bunch of parameters after the event. What kind of parameters you should track? They are the parameters or indicate why this event happens, okay? So you gotta track that sort of thing. There are three categories of this. So user context, meaning that, okay, so what the player state is at, why that happened. Again, I will show you through why that is in a future, in the next analysis. Um, so that includes, for example, uh, at the user's level at that time, if there is a user level, okay, the user's currency amount at that time. You know, for example, if they make purchase, you want to check their currency at the time. Uh, that's all to do with user. And the second is game context. This is because uh, game version, game events that's happening in the game could affect why these events are happening. Again, you're trying to use parameter to indicate why this has happened. Uh, so game context, you need to talk about, you need to track version numbers, you need to track whether there are special events happening, whether there are special A-B testing that's happening in the game. Uh, so that's game context. Uh, and actual value of those events. What do I mean? Let me give you an example. And I will ask you questions about this as well. So, so this is a round end event in an endless uh, uh, game, right? So this is like an early GTA police chase where you just drive your car endlessly until you either crash or police chases up to you. Okay, so, so that's the point of the game. And uh, so it's round end. When you die or, or time's up, it's around end. So you send that round end event. Uh, what I mean by user context is you might want to track demographics. By the way, Facebook already tracked demographics, so you don't have to by default, so you don't have to do that yourself. Uh, they actually give you gender information and even income information if they can link it to your Facebook ID. Uh, so that's fairly useful. Uh, so you don't have to track demographic detail within that. With certain other analytic tools, you want and you might have to, like Unity Analysts, Mixed Panel, uh, they don't have that information. Uh, so, uh, currency, uh, but most analytics tools will have device information, by the way. Device information, language, uh, a bunch of other information anyway. Uh, so, currency, meaning that, uh, like, how much, like I said, how much currency that user currently have, uh, and the, the actual car used. If that round is different to any other round, they can actually select a different car to use in that round. That would be a significant information to track, because then you can start analyzing what kind of cars being used, right? <laughs> what, what are the most popular cars being used in every single round? Uh, is it a popular in early rounds, this type of car, or is it more popular in later round? So you gotta track that information. Uh, game contest, like I said, version and events. And the values, so, so when that event happens, there are a bunch of values associated with it. So like the round, actual round time, how that, how that player died, that is reason is very important because you can then adjust around whether it being too difficult for early users or not, which is one of the biggest factor. Uh, and then stars, like this, this particular game has stars. So you track all that. So my question to you guys, can you think of any extra parameter you could potentially need to track with that event in terms of these three categories? Any thoughts? Yes? If you guys are paying user? Yes, yes, if a guy is paying user. Um, not necessarily in this round M because you can use segmentation uh, achieving the same thing, which you can use Facebook. Certain analytic tool, definitely. Uh, Facebook is very flexible in that, so which is great. Any other information, any other thoughts with this particular event? Okay, uh, so 
So, for example, there are, uh, if usually endless endless game is procedural generated, right? So, which tile, you know, which area this person dies in, is very important information as well. So, one of the games I worked on is because uh, like had really bad day with retention, and figured out was one of the tiles they use procedurally generate endless game was way too early for the skill level at a time. And he changed one thing and increased his day one retention by 15%. It's just one change. And that's because he tracked the tile that's being used uh, at that time. Uh, that gave him enough information. Okay. So the next step, now you're tracking all these events. That's great, right? So what do you do with this? You need data, <laughs> right? You actually need players. So it's very common people ask me how many people you need, right? I, the rule of thumb for me is 2,000 DAU. Uh, the reason being, if you think about conversion rate of two to five percent of people paying you in a game, so you, in general, um, and most indie independent developers don't get to two to five percent. Uh, you, you, if two thousand a year, you end up to be about forty people that's paying you every day. That's very little data to analyze your paying player behavior, which is one of the critical thing you need to analyze. Um, so it becomes very little, especially if we talk about a global audience. If you are soft launch in a very homogeneous traffic area, so the behavior is very similar, right? So if you're only doing New Zealand, Australia, maybe 500 installs, uh, like do a pulse of 500 install every now and then is enough to look at new user experience because the traffic is generally, uh, their behavior is quite similar. So you don't have to worry too much about it. But if you are doing globally and you don't do a soft launch, um, I would say a rule of thumb is minimum of 2,000 DAU in order to get statistically significant data in order for you to analyze it. Even with 40 paying players, what I generally see is data is all over the place as well. Um, so it is really, really critical to get above that number. Okay, so this is part a lot of analytic tools to go through, okay? And I'm not going to uh, go into too much acronyms, but are there any acronym here on this screen that you don't get? That's fine, I'll explain it. Do you get all of the acronyms here? Right, day one, day two, right, okay. Right, cool. Yeah, make sure you ask me, this is interactive, so ask me if you, and stop me if you don't, you feel like I need to go through certain things. So, this is a minimum set of things you need to know as uh, to how you can figure out where the problem is, right? So we talk about what you track, we talk about which tool you use. Now we, when you start tracking, we want to figure out where exactly is the problem. That's the first step. Otherwise you have a whole game to look at, you know, where is that? So this problem? So this is the first area. If you look at analytics, it's more like, uh, I have a broad set of things. I need to figure out, oh, this bit is a problem. Then I go depth, okay? So this is a broad bit right now. Um, so D1, D3, and D7. Day one, day three, day seven retention is very commonly uh, industry standard. You can find lots of benchmark on it. Uh, conversion rate is usually indicated by daily. Uh, daily is more uh, relevant to you as a designer. Industry often reports uh, downloads to install, uh, download to pay, don't worry about it, but daily is what you really need to look at. And updown and uh, ARPPU, so there are benchmarks around it. I'm not going to talk too much about those benchmarks. I want to talk about how you look at it holistically. Let me give you two scenarios. Okay. So these are two scenarios I want to talk about how you look at holistically. Um, you shouldn't just use one number and say that's a problem, okay? You should look at the whole spectrum of numbers and go where might be a problem. Okay, so for the first scenario as a casual game, that's what you saw, for example. You saw, oh, okay, by the way, these are real uh, uh, customer data, but I manipulated the metrics a little bit. Uh, so, but it's indicative of the cases I've actually worked on. 
Okay, so you see like day one retention 35%, day seven 10, conversion rate 1.3, uh, app Dow 0.03. Any idea what might be a problem in this game? Like just from that information? Day seven, very good. Yeah, very good. Yeah, so day seven is definitely one of the problem because in general, rule of thumb, casual game, they have, they should have higher day one, day one retention. But rule of thumb is you look at day one, day seven holistically in the way that rule of thumb, day seven should be about half of day one, you know, uh, because like it's a funnel like that, right? So day one should be the biggest, day seven go down. Um, but then if your day one is that big, but day seven is this big, <laughs> so that means you're losing lots of players along the way, okay? So day seven is the issue, and day seven issue typically indicate right after the tutorial, right after early game experience, your progression, your meta game isn't attracting players to say. Okay, so that's a usual problem area. Okay, so this person also have a fairly okay conversion rate, especially if you think about without optimization, straight out the door is fairly okay, 1.3%, okay? It's less than two, but it's 1.3%, it's fairly okay. But it's a very low app down. It's 0.03. So in general, I use USD, uh, uh, three cents, and because the benchmark will be USD. So usually if you have high conversion rate, like in comparison, but very low uh, apt out, one of the area you want to look into is are people making repeated purchases, one area. And second area you want to look into, are they making first purchase early enough, right? So, so mainly two things you might want to start thinking, oh, I might need to look into that. So uh, this is the first case. And the second case is mid-core game, right? It's 25% D7, uh, 15, conversion rate 0.5, and app Dow 0.15. Any of, uh, any thinking around that set of metrics? Conversion rate is too low. Yeah, yes, definitely. Conversion rate is way too low for a mid-core game. So mid-core game satisfy, uh, uh, medical sacrifices retention, because generally not that many people uh, uh, on the, uh, uh, by the way, this is mobile benchmark, it's not PC, uh, but Mikko game sacrifices retention, because not that many people in the audience would play Mikko when they first come in. So, so the retention is generally low, but they have amazing app Dow. So, so their money is high. Right, but in this case, this person's this game's conversion rate is fairly low, 0.5 percent. You should see at the higher end because you're getting an audience that's more mickle. They already know, you know, they stay beyond seven days, meaning they know, you know, like I'm playing with this game I like, you know. But the conversion rate is fairly low, and app doubt is fairly low for a mickle game as well. So. What you need to concentrate on instead of first game, which is retention, what you need to concentrate on is probably looking at monetization straight away. Uh, the order is usually looking at retention, then looking at monetization, but a second uh, set of metrics indicate this might be a monetization issue. So straight away, when you look at what I meant by looking at a health area, straight away when you look at holistically, you start going, okay, so day one is okay, but day seven isn't and blah, blah, blah. You start going looking at which one you should be looking at. And sometime your metrics could be completely different to benchmark, which I have encountered. But as long as your audience sticky enough to give you a very high app Dow, ultimately, you know, the app Dow is everything. Ultimately, you're making enough revenue and that's probably fine. You know, maybe there are a lot of things you can improve, but if your app Dow is pretty high, that's actually pretty good. So go, go to the benchmark and have a look. Uh, uh, if you didn't get the links and tweet at me, I'll send you the, uh, the links. Okay, so I want to talk about, um, I want to have lots of uh, time to talk about very detailed scenario, but I want to go through at least two scenarios in more detail. 
okay, and how you can use the tool to analyze it. Uh, these are the very common, most commonly seen actually scenarios I've seen uh, with independent game developers. Uh, the first one is poor, uh, very poor early user experience because they tend to design and a play test with friends uh, and family who are in the industry. They don't generally play tests and design for the actual audience. So they usually overestimate the skill levels of their audience. Uh, uh, so they usually have a poor uh, early user experience. I believe there's a talk today even about tutorial, which is interesting. Um, so poor early user experience and second is the value of IAP isn't clear. This is a very, very common problem as well. Like, how do you sell your IAP? Uh, uh, this isn't very clear to lots of independent de game developers. So, right. And uh, poor early user experience, the typical symptom is you see a low day one retention. What I mean by low is less than 20% or something, right? Uh, especially I'm talking about majority game. Um, so you have a very low day one retention. Uh, that's a typical symptom. And when you look at integrate, uh, when you look at investigating it, there are several tools, okay? I'm going to talk about what use for in each instance. Okay, there are tutorial funnel, which is this diagram. Uh, you can do that in Facebook analysis by go to funnel and then you can start building the funnel. Like I said, uh, using a tutorial step, we were just talking about the events where you track with tutorial step. That's one by one, all right? So you can immediately start seeing there is a bigger drop off between tutorial step one and tutorial step two, as well tutorial step four, right after tutorial step four, right? So there is problem with tutorial step one and a problem with tutorial step four. But you got to also take into account the amount of time. Uh, some analysts don't track it. Some analysts just, uh, like def by default tracks it. You got to think about the amount of time each step takes. Sometimes one step is ta just taking way longer than the other. Then that doesn't apply. I'm talking about like equivalent time spent at each step. And then you have a big drop, drop off. And that's one of the first tool you go to to look at drop off. However, that's not all though. Um, the problem with that, with this funnel, the problem with this funnel is, um, first of all, it assumes linear. Okay, so, so your steps has to be linear. It has to be one after the other, right? Oh, by the way, uh, do people know like the tutorial funnel, they, they, are, they are number of players, the drop off indicated number of players. So like tutorial one step is 100 players, next is 80 players, next is 60 players. It shows that how many people just left <laughs> without playing, finishing the tutorial, okay. Um, so so the, the tutorial step funnel has number of problems, okay. First of all, uh, it assumes linear. You have to have a linear tutorial. Some games don't. I do recommend linear for very early user experience because you don't want to give them choice when they first come in the game without understanding, without learning all the necessary skills, okay? But um, the other problem with it is sometimes you can optimize your tutorial as much as you can, your day one retention doesn't improve. The reason being you're tracking the wrong thing, you're looking at the wrong thing. The reason being your tutorial is just part of like very short experience, let's say uh, it's less than, it's a half a minute, you know, 30 seconds tutorial. And the more you optimize, like you get to 80%, 90% completion rate, and then it's just 30 seconds. What determines day wear attention could be the rest of the two minutes or so in the first session people play. You know, so sometimes you optimize the tutorial funnel and you don't see your day where attention improve. Then you need to start looking at the next bit. The next bit is if it's non-linear and there are a bunch of things people could do after the tutorial, you want to segment them and cohort them and go, which retention, which point people love to play and they actually stay after that. That's basically what that graph is. This is very simply done in Facebook analysis, which I'm really surprised because usually you take a lot of time to do this sort of thing. 
Um, so in Facebook Analyst, you can do cohort. It's called cohort section. You go into a cohort section, you can build it. And so you go, so basically go, remember the tracking event, we track all the progression point. You go people who finish mission one, and the second compare with people who finish sex side quest one, assuming you have two different points. And then you look at the retention. Clearly in this case, People who finish mission one stays, the retention is much better than any other, uh, than any other ones. Um, and that means the mission one is the one, there's something about mission one is the one that people really like. Maybe you should stop doing side quests in the first five minutes, you know, in the first day, then do a side quest a little bit later. Okay, so, so check that out. If your tutorial funnel optimize it, still doesn't improve day one retention. And then even going deeper, okay, if you want to look at a deep reason of why your day one retention doesn't improve, look at each and every, every round people play. Okay, I'm assuming this is round based, like what we talked about just then, that example. So in this particular one, round one, uh, it's maybe too small on the X axis. Round one has the biggest death reason being crashed. Round two, biggest reason is actually time's up, meaning like they actually completed. Round three is time's up. This is an extreme example, but as you can see, people just did not have the necessary skill in round one, and they crashed way too much, which it shouldn't happen in round one. The first round, you almost want them to succeed. <laughs> in every way possible. <laughs> and so, you know, they're not obviously not succeeding. And it's very likely then, combined with that retention diagram, if you just like plot the round one finish retention, then you can clearly see people play a finish round one, but they, they probably don't really like the game because <laughs> they're failing too much. So make sure you also look at individual rounds. So there are three tools for you to investigate day one retention. Any other questions with that? Just want to make sure we're very clear on this. Okay, good. Okay, so value of IAP isn't clear. Uh, this is a very complicated topic, but I want to cover the most common scenarios where uh, the symptom is low conversion rate, which we just saw in the previous example metrics, right? Low conversion rate is typical uh, of this, uh, this, this type of scenario. Then you do need to investigate purchase point, repeated purchases, and things like that. It used to be very difficult, but again, much easier now with Facebook analysts. So you can look at the first purchase. Remember I talked about using first purchase separate, separately from any other events. So this comes into handy with uh, the one on the, uh, my right, your left. Uh, so the first purchase diagram shows most purchase first purchase happens at round 10, okay? And then the next one is round five. So there must be certain inflection point at round 10, people start needing it. Then you can correlate that with days played, you know, days played and when the purchase happened in terms of days to see whether it's too late. Um, but in this case, when I look at the round 10, it turns out the purchase is a little bit too late. Okay, it happens right after. Most people would have left, you know. So most people left in this case, you know, after, you know, round three, actually. And the purchase happens around 10. Well, you got to borrow this forward and you got to make people go through rounds better. So you can correlate these two pieces of data to come up with that conclusion. So that's first purchase. But you got to look at whether people who stay and purchase had repeated purchase power, which in this case, this game does. Okay, again, I manipulate the data a little bit, so it's not true data offer, but it is one of the games I've worked on. You can start seeing the average number of purchase per user is actually rising fairly good, fairly well. It's not flattening out, it's rising fairly well. So you can see even after 15 days, people are still repeatedly purchasing. Yeah, it's really good. So I can see their problem isn't that they, their items aren't being used. Once people discover the items after round 10, they, they, they keep purchasing. Great. Their problem is in general the first purchase. 
Okay, so what you can do, because purchase has three big things, the timing, the price, the value. You know, the value in terms of how user sees the value of IAP, right? So it's like the 3P rule for marketing, you know, the place, price, and uh, I can't remember the last P actually. But you go look at these three things and you can test that with a first, pers first purchase dialogue by looking at time. You know, you can raise that, you can put a first purchase dialogue at round five in this case and see how that goes. Right, that's an immediate testing you can start doing. So my recommendation, if you narrow down it's a first purchase uh, problem, use first purchase, first purchase dialogue. And everybody knows what first purchase dialogue is, yeah? Yeah? Cool, okay. Make sure you do A-B testing, right? And actually that's another myth, that like people think it's very hard to set up. Uh, it's only A-B testing, uh, uh, do people know much about A-B testing? A-B testing, yeah, A-B testing is just randomly select, you know, new players and you go, uh, version A is my control group, that nothing has been changed, that's the existing game. Version B is what my change has applied. So, so, so you can actually test, uh, is version B better than version A? simultaneously. The advantage of that is most independent developers have less traffic than they want to, the smaller traffic. A-B testing allows for that because it's more sensitive to, uh, to, to um, smaller uh, changes. Because you're testing the traffic, the traffic is, uh, is being held in a consistent, you're testing the same people, you know? You're testing the same people, you're not testing before and after different type of people. It could be due to different type of people. So, so it's more sensitive to smaller traffic. Um, it has more definitive results. I actually have devs setting up within a day, not even like more than a day, because it's just random selection out of new players. Set up within a day, and after a few tests, they said they would not go back ever to release a feature without A-B testing because it's so much more obvious what you've done, right? So you get definitive results because because it's one version control, one improved. You go, ah, okay. So King does 200 A-B testing a time in their game. That's how much A-B testing being used. Uh, A-B testing isn't very suitable for big changes though because there could be a number of things, you know, things change, but it, there could be a number of reasons uh, due to, you know, like a bunch of chains that you introduce at the same time. But A-B testing is phenomenal and incredibly uh, well for first purchase dialogue, for example. You can test the timing very well at the same time. And then you do fast iteration. Imagine if you do before and after comparison, it's less sensitive, but you also need, wait, uh, submit a version, wait for Apple, submit another version, wait for Apple uh, to approve. So it's much faster as well. So do consider A-B testing. It's actually not hard to set it up. All you have to do is indicating a parameter, this is group A, this is group B. And I'm sure you can do random pretty well in your code, right? So. So that's it for now. I go through these two common scenarios. Um, you first need to understand which tool I talked about. Then you need to get events, parameters, then look at the high level metrics, then go through individual diagram that's all available uh, in Facebook analytics. Yeah, but any questions, you can contact me uh, at you know, Twitter and email. And uh, our website currently is accepting questions as well. We just change it so that you can ask any question specifically for NZGDC. Um, yeah, so you can do all that. Yeah, let me know uh, what's the, any questions for now. I think I still have time for some questions. 5.15, I think I still have time for five minutes or something. Any questions? Um, yes. Hey. Yeah, hi. Really cool it's really interesting. Thank you. you. Yeah, in at PopCap, yes. Do you find that, um, that there is much that needs to be done as far as analytics goes? Uh, yeah. To tweak for those oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the player behavior is completely different. 
Uh, it's China and Japan even, they have very different behavior. Uh, Southeast Asia is, uh, like Southeast Asia has quite a few countries, they're fairly consistent, but China, Japan, and Korea <laughs> uh, have very different behavior. For example, but, but comparing to Western players, they all play Lomo. Okay, they all play Lomo session time is longer, purchase is less, but higher. So they, they were, the conversion rate would be lower, but the purchase amount will be higher. So they have a lot more hardcore player. And so your game content will probably like get consumed one third faster than the Western audience. Yeah, uh, and uh, oh, one, one disadvantage for Facebook analysts, by the way, is it doesn't have verified uh, in-app purchase right now, revenue, which is a problematic because your metrics, your monetization metrics will be wrong, especially on Android, uh, because there will be so many pirated users on Android. Yeah, Unity has that. So I almost have to like use two <laughs> different tools to look at, yeah. So um, adapting to, uh, to uh, Asia with analytics per se, uh, China, you have to have a server inside a country, so you can't use any of the Western, no Facebook, definitely. So you have to have a, uh, your own analytics, basically, inside China, unfortunately. So is, is that like, are you able to use WeChat or? Uh... You can use WeChat. China has, uh, actually, the Chinese uh, game industry has very, very sophisticated analytics tools. So you can use their local analytics tool. A lot of them are in English anyway, so they, they're trying to go to West Market. Uh, uh, not a lot of them, some of them are in English. So if I switch to China, I will use their own uh, analytics tool. Yeah, because uh, I can't be bothered to set up a server inside China, you know? <laughs> so yeah, so I will use that. Otherwise, uh, the behavior you try, the events you try will be similar. Mm. No worries. Yeah. Any other question? Yes. Um, if you are stuck in Facebook and you don't have that verification of purchases, yeah. is there anything you can get out of that? So uh, one of my developers start doing local verification themselves. If you have server end, you can verify. If you use client end, it's fine as well. You can verify. So uh, just to get around not having to use Unity Analyst, because Unity Analyst started proving to be too, there's no Unity people here, <laughs> uh, just too cumbersome. And so they're switching everything to Facebook analytics and they just go, uh, we need to do revenue, <laughs> revenue verification at some point. <laughs> yeah, so, so they did it and uh, then they can start using Facebook. Yeah. Mm. So I would highly suggest actually doing local verification yourself. Yeah. Because uh, I have to say Facebook analysts is 10 times better than Unity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just talking about the analytics tools. Yeah. Um, what's the main limitation of the free analytics tools? Yeah. Can you use the right types in order to uh, customize it? Yeah. So it's very hard to do a raw data analysis. Yeah. That's the main, main, main problem. I used to, uh, I would not have used any free tool about two, three years ago. Now I would. Uh, just because they've definitely caught up, especially pivoting on multiple parameters on one event. Uh, that's actually a lot more advanced now. It used to be only a mixed panel. I can see is the equivalent of pay tool that does very well on pivoting, meaning that you you can cohort and uh, you can cohort on several factors. Um, it used to be on a mixed panel, which costs about, you know, uh, depending on MAU, 1500 or 2000 per month or something. But now it seems Facebook has that same capability and it's fast. It's really fast. Uh, I don't have to worry about it. When you go to customer, it's custom uh, uh, tool is when you need to do machine learning on raw data. You can't do in any of the analytic tool. You need to do uh, uh, um, the uh, personalization, which is next bit of more advanced, you start personalized to individual players' behavior. Non-analyst can do that for you. Uh, meaning you have a back and forth, you know, you get the data, you need to react to that data. You know, none of the analyst tool can do that. It's more for you to look at the data. I would definitely use custom 
tool by that point. That's why all of the uh, analytics uh, big studios, uh, they have their own custom tool. They don't use uh, 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 like any of the free analytics tools. But big studios sacrifice, they have enough resources to do what Facebook does quickly. <laughs> and they have to build their own dashboard, right, quickly. Uh, a lot of time, probably nowadays, if I have a studio and I do my own game, I will use a combination of two. I will use Facebook for fast analysis, look at data, and will use uh, uh, my own tool, mo mostly working on raw data for machine learning purposes, yeah. They do, they do, Facebook does, Unity does as well. Um, again, I won't talk about Unity shit, but you know. <laughs> I'm sorry, they are, it's, uh, it's really bad. The way they count your install is not accurate actually. So that will create big problems for a lot of retention stuff, yeah. Um, any other questions? Sorry, I don't want to rent, rent on <laughs> Unity. Any questions? Yes, yeah. Is there a way to validate the events that you're seeing? Because yeah. sometimes you it's very hard. If you pass with five users, ten users, but when you move to a, a bigger scale, sometimes the data is not accurate. No. Yeah. It's very hard. You obviously, you know, like, um, so with revenue data, um, I verify, at least our own platform, verify against Apple and Google's own reports, but it's freaking hard because they don't actually have their own individual, trans at least uh, we found, couldn't find their transaction ID. Google Play has, Apple doesn't, and I'm like, oh, it's really, really hard. For, very, for, for revenue, you can verify it using that way. For new install, we usually track our own new install event. We will send a new install event ourselves, which just means the game being open for the first time, uh, which would be slightly less than the device new install, and we verify against the Google Play any other custom events then, you have to use, Facebook uh, has a live events tab you can look at, so you can test via that. But at that point, you're testing mainly using parameters. Your testing parameters are being sent through correctly. Um, but otherwise, there are not many other methods you can test just these three things, you know. You know, compare with your own tracking, compare with Google tracking. Uh, compare is, you know, looking at the live events going through. Are you guys doing anything differently? Um, usually we try to simulate stuff, mm. but it's, it's hard to do it in a big scale. Yeah, exactly. It's very hard. Yeah, we used to, at PopCap, we also used to do dump. You know, we used to put a text dump of all the events uh, at one point, and the uh, when it's, it only works when you're a small and soft launch, you know? And then you have to manually go and check all the events and whether the text dump makes sense. <laughs> I don't envy the job of person doing that. <laughs> yeah, so, so, but that's again when you have less traffic than, than major traffic, yeah. Um, yeah. Any other questions? No, great. Sorry, so I put it over the time.